Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a dreams tutorial. Today, we are going to be looking at making a start menu. Now, I made a tutorial during early access for making the start menu, which involved invisible sculpts and grab sensors and hover states and things like that. Now, you don't need to do any of that anymore. Um, they have changed the gadgetry for launch, and now we have a simpler way of making a menu. So I'm going to show you that. So we'll start off with a microchip. Let's pop a microchip down. This is going to be our start menu. So I'm going to name it. It's always a good idea to uh, name your gadgetry so that you know what microchip does what. Start menu. And let's see, is there anything? Oh, we'll use, we'll use that. There we go. So that's our start menu microchip. Let's open it up. Okay, first thing to do then is uh, decide what we're going to have. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a menu and a sub menu, uh, a link to start the game and a link to exit completely. That's what I'm going to have. So um, I'm going to use this as the backdrop for my menu. You could obviously have an entire lovely scene with characters in and, and trees and whatever you want. Um, but I'm just going with a simple pink background that's it um, I'm going to make a sub menu which is going to be our controls page so I'm going to just grab a controller out of the dream reverse and stick it over here I'm going to use that like that right that's going to be my sub menu and this is my main menu so we're going to need some cameras to aim at both of those so um, I'm going to stick that one in and so I do L1 and X and then I want it so that I can't see the edges of that box there we go that'll do fine and we'll copy that camera and we'll go L1 and X again and I'm going to get the camera so it's looking at the controller like Okay, that's good. That's my two sub menus and my two sub camera views. So there's our two choices. Right, now we're going to put in our menu. So I'm going to go to movers and outputs and dialogue text displayer. And I'm going to stick that down uh, like so. And we'll open that up. And the first thing I want to choose to do is um, choose my font. Um, I saw a nice chunky one earlier on, so I'm going to use that. If I can find it. It's too many fonts to choose from. There we go. There it is. There it is. That is. That's the one I want. So I'm going to use that as my font. Um, we're going to be using the highlight mode which is our new mode for this particular gadget which allows us to make these lovely menus and I'm going to put the highlight brightness up and I'm going to put it on text only highlight because I'm going to get rid of the boxes um, so we're going to get rid of the text box and I'm going to get rid of the border then I'm going to keep the shadow because I think it looks quite nice with the text now at the moment we've got no text and uh, just an empty box. So we're going to go to dialogue properties, which is these two black speech bubbles, and I'm going to choose imp text prompts. This turns our imp into a cursor. And I'm going to put my three options in here. So I've already typed these out a few times, so I just need to select them. You'll be typing these out. There we go, start controls and exit. That's what I want for my three options. And if I go back to the text properties, I would like it to be black to start with, but I know that black, pure black doesn't quite work because it, it won't um, highlight or glow. So I'm just gonna move it slightly off the end of that triangle and that should help. Then I'm gonna go into settings, make sure that is on text. 
and the brightness is on. I can't test it in this mode, so I'm going to have to test it in a minute. And uh, now let's do the alignment. Let's get it horizontal and in the middle. Um, now we've got it horizontal. Actually, it's too low, so I'm just going to raise it up by grabbing the invisible part of the box and moving it up like so. Um, be careful, do not move these individual ones because you can move these all out of alignment. You want to move the um, invisible part, this part here. So grab it with R2 and then move it in the direction you want. That's about right. Um, let's have a look and see what we've got. So there's our menu. There was a bit of movement with the camera. We're going to sort that out in a minute. So um, there we go. When I hover over, I've got some lovely menus starting to appear. That's great. That's exactly what I want. Right, the cameras weren't quite right. So let's go back into our microchip camera, change it to a cut transition. And this one, cut. There we go. That's what we want. Now we've got to think about wiring up um, our selection. So let's turn that off for now. I'm going to put in a selector. And what's going to happen is um, that th we've got three output sockets on this start menu. And we're going to wire A to be our first menu and B to be our second menu. So we're going to wire A into the power of that dialog text box and the power of that camera and B into that camera. And now I want a dialog text displayer um, to return us back to this menu. So I'm going to just copy the old one, edit with L1 and square. And I'm going to turn off those two options and turn this into the word return and I'm going to change the position of the, oops select the right one right, hang on no that's not the one I want that's the one I want I want to put that down there I'm going to have to move this back up again. Right, okay. So there we go. So that B is now going to open up the power on that dialog text displayer. And we're going to link our return link to move to next output. And we're going to put our controls link to move to next output. So what this is doing, when you choose controls, it's moving from A to B. And when you choose return, it's moving from B to A through that move to next output selection. So let's have a look at that then. Start, controls, exit, let's choose controls, press X. Then we've got our control thing and you put some text in here to explain what each of these buttons do. Maybe some lines coming out, pointing to each little bit and uh, or you could even get really fancy so you can hover over each of these little pieces and have text appearing, whatever you want to do. So then we're going to press return and we're back to the beginning menu. Right, now we're going to put in our start and exits and that is two doorways. So we're going to put in gameplay gear, doorway there and a doorway there. So that's a start doorway and that's our exit doorway. We're going to name those doorways to make it easy for ourselves. So that's our start doorway. And that's our exit doorway. So now we're going to wire the start output on our dialog text displayer to the start and our exit to our exit. And that's it. 
Now we're going to save this as a scene. And we're going to call it menu. Make sure it's a scene. It doesn't work if it's an element. Right, there we go. Menu. Done. Now we're going to create a dream. So I'm going to grab my menu, stick it in here. So now we've got start and exit. It's created ourselves an entrance doorway automatically because I've put the scene in a dream. So now we need to do the start to our game. So we find the, uh, the first scene of our game like this. And then you link the start to the start of your game. Then you link the exit to there. Now then, let's try that. We're going to save it as, um, as a game. The name of your game would go in here. Okay, here's our game. Let's play. Here's our menu, start, controls, exit. So controls, I've looked at the controls, return, um, press start. And there we go, it started my game. Let's reset progress, press play. Um, I press exit and that's exited the game so that you can uh, play something else. So there you go. So that's it. That's how you create a menu. Hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.